So this video is gonna be pretty short and sweet. I'm basically gonna break it into two parts. Part one is gonna be all the parts that you need and all those boxes to put a manual transmission in your old car. So this is specific to the T5 swap. The first five minutes or so of this video is gonna be all about that. So if you need to know what parts are involved, what you should order, what transmission you should select, watch the first five minutes. If you already bought everything, but you're curious on how to install a flywheel and clutch, you've never done it before, maybe you're nervous, I'm here to tell you it's very easy. So the second half of the video is gonna be how to install a clutch, things to think about before you install the clutch. Like for example, if you need to cut a hole in your floor, you don't wanna have a nice clean clutch flywheel, everything, and then be shooting metal shards out as you're cutting holes in your floor. So we're gonna talk about that. We're gonna throw the clutch in. It's gonna be about a 10 to 12 minute video, um, chock full of good information. And then in the next video, um, we'll go ahead and we'll talk more about the bell housing, the hydraulics, all that stuff. Um, but for now, let's just get to it. We'll do a quick recap of the last video and then we'll jump right into it. Let's get going. Checked out the first video where I moved the transmission, the AOD from my 1964 Mercury Comet. Um, got that all pulled out. It took me about four to five hours. Uh, this is with taking breaks, doing it all by myself. I do have a lift, um, but I did not have a transmission jack. So the actual removal step was done similar to how you would do it on jack stands um, with a regular floor jack. Um, in this video, we are gonna talk about everything I purchased, um, both new and secondhand, and essentially kind of what you guys are gonna need if you're swapping in a T5 transmission uh, into an older car. I'm gonna flip the camera around, I'm gonna talk to you about what I purchased, and then we'll start to get into the install, but this will just give you a good idea of everything uh, to think about if you're doing this yourself. So first and foremost, probably uh, the most important part is your transmission. So this is a world-class transmission out of a 2000s, um, I think a year 2000 actually, Mustang. It was a V6 that this came out of. Um, really all you need to know if you're picking a T5 is if you're doing it in a you know, Ford product, I, I would get the Ford bolt patterns. There's a different style kind of front bolt pattern for GM versus Ford. Um, and then make sure that if you're running bench seats or a console or something like that, um, that you get the right tail housing. So some people will get the S10 tail housing, which moves your shifter location forward. Um, and that can be very helpful if you have a bench seat. I do not have a bench seat or a console. So this is just how it came in the year 2000. Um, this is a world-class unit, um, which are the newer models. Uh, they take ATF, so you'll see here that um, when I bought everything from Modern Driveline, they supplied the ATF. But basically all you need to know is for a world-class T5, you need ATF for an older non-world-class. Um, I believe that's a certain type of gear oil. So that is important. Um, just a couple little things to point out here. Um, this one does not have the mechanical speedo drive. So like right now I've got um, a mechanical speedometer, right? And that is what went into the AOD. But with this, I'm gonna need to either change over to an electronic speedo. You can also replace this, but that's more involved. I'm not gonna do it. Just something to consider. Um, this is a hookup for your, your reverse lights. And what else should I really point out? Oh, um, make sure you get the right input shaft length. Um, this would have came with the wrong length, but when this was rebuilt by the person I bought it from, he installed the correct shorter uh, input shaft length. So that's just something to consider when you're doing the T5, um, and then we'll run you through everything else. You're gonna need a flywheel, obviously, um, because you had a flex plate before, so you'll need a flywheel. Um, it does come with this little kind of spacer dealio. Um, I had one when I pulled the automatic. I don't know, I can measure them and see if they're different but I just went ahead and got this as well. So you're gonna need you know, your flywheel, you're gonna need that plate, you're gonna need a clutch. Um, this is the King Cobra clutch. I didn't pull it out of the box just because it's all nicely wrapped and I will wait until I get to that step to pull everything apart, but you're gonna need a clutch. Um, and what else? Um, you're gonna need a bell housing. You're gonna need the shift fork, shift lever, whatever you wanna call it. Um, you're gonna need a transmission mount. You're gonna need um, what else here can I see that you're gonna need? Oh, you're gonna need a clutch lever. If your car is not an automatic, we're gonna need a clutch lever. Um, I've got the hardware for this, it's in another bag. You know, if you wanna be fancy, you can get the little boot for it. Um, shift ball, shift lever, shifter, um, shift boot to go on the floor, and obviously some different hardware. So they supplied me with, uh, this is a clutch stop right here. Um, this is your flywheel. I always recommend ARP. If you're gonna install something um, and you really don't wanna think about it, ARP hardware is great. So these are the flywheel bolts. These are the pressure plate bolts. In here, I should have my clutch and pressure plate. 
Um, what else can I think of that you might need? Uh, just miscellaneous bolts and everything here. So I've got the bolts that allow me to bolt the transmission to the bell housing and also the bell housing to the motor. Um, somewhere in here hidden, I forget where I put it, there's a little spacer block that you can install that will basically get you the right angle for your transmission uh, because driveline angles are important. So just a general rule of thumb, um, two degrees down with the transmission and two degrees up with your rear end is a, probably a pretty good starting point for a street car. And just some miscellaneous more hardware in here. Um, and then the hydraulics. So I did not opt to do a um, like a cable clutch or a Z bar or anything like that. So I'm gonna do hydraulics. So there's a hydraulic slave cylinder and a hydro hydraulic um, master cylinder, all as part of this. So that is kind of everything that you're gonna need. I noticed one thing that, that I forgot to add to the order. It was on the order, but then um, I took it off the order. So this right here is the mount uh, basically for an AOD, to install an AOD. I'm hoping I can modify this so that it'll work with the T5. If not, I may have to order one. They do sell it, Modern Driveline sells it. So we'll see if that's gonna be a deal breaker or not. Um, we'll try and make I'm that. I'm gonna have to go and cut my floor and I need to decide when I'm gonna do that because I don't wanna throw a bunch of debris onto, you know, onto my brand new fresh uh, clutch and flywheel. So maybe I'll do that first, which will mean I'll pull the lift down. We'll have to see, but one way or the other, I'll have to do one of those things first, um, just so we have adequate space so we can get the, the shifter or the transmission up in there without contaminating everything, but you will see me come and clean all that. I want to point out, <clears throat> make sure you read the instructions with your ARP hardware. So, okay, you saw me, you know, torque it obviously, but the type of lubricant you put on these threads is very important. They want Loctite 242 on the threads, but they want the ARP fastener lube on the underside head of the bolts, okay? So underside head of the bolts, basically, you know, for reference, under here and the threads get the Loctite. And then you saw me tighten it. I usually like to do a couple passes. So the torque on these is 75 foot pounds, but I don't like to go to 75 all at once. So I go hand tight, then I do 35, then 50, crisscross pattern, then 75. Once I hit 75, I go back around one more time. And um, that lubricant that you put on the threads, when this thing spins, if you put too much, it'll start working its way out. So I did try to go around and clean off as much as I could, then come back again and hit the uh, this face of the flywheel with a cleaner. I ran a brake clean, so I'm gonna go grab some of my wife's nail polish remover or acetone. And then um, they are specific as well on the clutch. They say, don't clean the clutch. So my hands are all dirty. This next step, you really want clean hands. I'm gonna go read all the instructions, wash my hands. Then I'll come back and install the clutch in the pleasure plate. So I want to take this time to show you guys something. So I've installed a few clutches before. Um, you can see my array of different clutch installation tools. Now, obviously, these are a different spline count than the T5, and they're a different um, OD for the, the pilot bushing or the pilot bearing. Now, this one, I noticed when I put it in that really what the alignment tool is supposed to do is hold the clutch in place 
so that you can put the, the pressure plate on. What I noticed was if I measured the OD of this and the OD of the input shaft of the transmission, the alignment tool was roughly 30 thousandths smaller. Now, you don't want it to be the exact same size. It needs to be able to slide in there. But basically, when I installed it, there was fifth, you know, a little bit of wiggle room. And what I didn't like about that is you could be off, and I'm exaggerating, but you could be off and the clutch would still you know, stay in there. So what I did was I wrapped, first I tried adding some grease to the end, right, to take up some of the slack, but that didn't really help. And then I, I installed it all, like you saw, and I decided, I don't like that. Um, it, it slid in and out fine, but um, I want it to be more exact. So I took some tape, wrapped some tape around it, and kept measuring this until I got very close to the OD of the input shaft. And then I shoved that in. And really, all you want is you should be able to pull this out with one finger. If it hangs up, that means when you go to try to stab the transmission in, it's going to bind. So I'm hoping that by doing that, I'll have no issues getting the transmission in. Hey, hopefully you found that video very useful. Um, we got the clutch installed last night. I'm back out here in the morning and I was going to go through and film some stuff on getting all your, you know, your bell housing ready for the hydraulic clutch, but I decided to hit stop. We're going to end the video here. Um, and then in the next video, we're going to do all the hydraulics. So the slave master, uh, bell housing install, transmission install, cross member, all that stuff will be in the next video. I really hope you guys like watching. Um, please do not forget to like and subscribe. That really helps me out. Um, and check back again for more new content on Truck and Roll. See you next week.